morning to all. Myself, Dr. Jibin Kumar, Deputy Director, Market Promotion and Statistics from MPEDA, welcoming you all to the India Malaysia Business Meet on Marine and Aquaculture Products. This program is done in collaboration with I Commission of India in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We had an initial meeting on 25th May of uh, uh, 2022 with uh, uh, the first secretary, Ms. C. Sushama. So in, in this, uh, we had discussions, uh, we had participated exporters and uh, uh, the first of uh, the outcome of that meeting is to conduct a business meet. So today we have all joined from Malaysia. Many of the stakeholders have been joined and uh, from India also, the exporters are also joined. Today we have with us uh, Honorable Chairman, Dr. K. N. Raghavan, IRS. And uh, from Malaysian side, the High Commissioner of India, His Excellency C. B. N. Reddy has joined. We have with us Mrs. Sushama, a Secretary, Commerce and Education, High Commission of India, Kuala Lumpur. We also have Dr. M. Kathikeyan, Director of MPEDA. Mr. Alex Nainan, President from the Seafood Export Association of India. And from Kuala Lumpur, Selangor, Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we have with us VK Rajasekharan and Mr. Gunalan Shanmugan. And we also have Mr. Anil Kumar, Joint Director of Marketing with us. So to begin this program, I invite Ms. C. Sushama, First Secretary, Commerce and Education, High Commission of India, Kuala Lumpur, to welcome the guest. Thank you, Mr. Jibin. Uh, Honorable High Commissioner of India to Malaysia, Chairman Marine Products Export Development Authority, Founder Chairman of Consortium of Indian Industries in Malaysia, Representatives of Malaysia's External Trade Development Corporation, Vice President Kuala Lumpur Salangor Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Director MPDA, Malaysian Seafood Importers, Seafood Exporters Association of India, Indian Seafood Producers Exporters, and other colleagues of MPDA and High Commission of India. A warm welcome to you all for this virtual buyer seller meet on marine products. The objective of the event today is to bring together the traders from the two sides, India and Malaysia, on one platform to understand the current profile of marine products trade, identify and understand challenges that the traders from both sides have been facing, and to explore the many opportunities available in the sector for future trade. We believe that there are perfect complementarities between India and Malaysia in this sector, given the competencies of Indian products and the demand in Malaysia for such products. The scope for future collaboration in the sector is immense, and there are opportunities to grow this trade manifold. And this is an occasion which gives us an opportunity to do that. We appreciate and welcome MPDA's active pursuit of trade interests of Indian marine products exporters. We regularly engage, as Mr. Jibin said, with MPDA and Indian exporters to understand how we can do this trade more and better. We welcome the active participation of Malaysian trade and business chambers, government trade bodies, and Malaysian traders in this event and look forward to continue our engagement with them on a regular basis. I encourage all Indian producers and exporters of marine products to continue to remain in regular touch with the High Commission. With this, I welcome you all once again uh, to this important event and hope we can make this a productive engagement for all of us. I encourage especially all trader participant colleagues to make the most out of this occasion and articulate their concerns and opportunities available. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for your uh, welcome uh, address. Now I welcome, I, I request uh, uh, Honorable Chairman of MPDA, Dr. K. N. Dagavan, IRS, to deliver the address. Good morning, uh, His Excellency, Mr. B. N. Reddy, High Commissioner of uh, India to Malaysia, Sri Rajasekharan, Sri Gunalan Shanmukham, other members of the Exim community in the seafood sector in India and Malaysia, 
my colleagues from EMPEDA and officials of the Indian High Commission. Let me at the very outset uh, thank uh, High Commissioner of India, Malaysia for taking the lead to organize this meeting between the exporters of seafood products in India and the uh, importers in Malaysia. We had a good year uh, so far as seafood exports was concerned because we could touch an all time high of uh, US dollars, uh, 7.74 billion in terms of value so far as export of the seafood products was concerned. But one area where we couldn't get the required traction was the export to ASEAN countries. While uh, in every other uh, sector or, or rather territory, the export showed a huge surge. As so far as the Asia, ASEAN was concerned, it couldn't get the required surge. So this is one area which we need to focus on and it's extremely heartening that the High Commission of India has taken the lead to organize this meeting between the trading communities of the two countries. In statistical terms, we had exported around 65 million US dollar worth of uh, seafood to Malaysia. Though we as a country are a huge exporters of shrimps, so far as Malaysia is concerned, our prime top export commodity was quit. So that also shows that we need a different approach to marketing our products to Malaysia. We have to understand the taste of the Malaysian market. We have to understand their likes and what are their priorities. So maybe a little bit or more of interaction between the importers of Malaysia and the exporters in India is required. And for that, the platform that is provided today with the help of High Commission offers the best ground for taking this forward. I'm sure that the deliberations that are done today will yield excellent results and we'll be able to double the exports during the years during the year ahead. And today is India is placed fifth. I'm sure that certainly a time will come when we will take the pole position so far as imports of seafood to Malaysia is concerned. Once again, thanking Indian High Commission for organizing this initiative. I wish this venture all success. Have a day of good deliberations. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for your uh, uh, introductory address uh, to this program. Now, we are honored with the presence of the High Commission of India to Malaysia, His Excellency C. B. N. Reddy. Now, I request Honorable High Commission of India to deliver the special address for this program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. B. K. K. Rajasekharan, Deputy President, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Selangor Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, Dato Umang Sharma, Founder Chairman, Confederation of Indian Industries in Malaysia, CIM. Dr. Raghavan, uh, Chairman, MPEDA, and a good friend. Good to see you, Dr. Raghavan, today in this virtual meet. Dr. Kartikeyan, Director, MPEDA. Uh, and distinguished representatives of uh, Matre Day, uh, Malaysian uh, trade associations, Indian producers and exporters, as well as very dear friends from Malaysia. And of course, my colleague uh, Sushma, first secretary commercial in the Indian High Commission. At the very outset, I'm very glad to join the India-Malaysia business meet on marine and aquaculture products. I'm very confident that today's virtual meet will help us to take stock of the current situation and explore avenues for further growth in the marine and the aquaculture products trade between our two countries. Uh, I see that already about 75 participants have joined this event virtually. The numbers are increasing. Uh, this is surely an indication of considerable interest among the companies dealing with trade in marine and aquaculture products between our two countries. Friends, before I touch on the potential for expanding business engagement in this particular sector, allow me to make a few points uh, which are important in the India-Malaysia economic and commercial engagement perspective. Uh, well, you know, we are all going through uh, a phase which is very difficult, uh, which is the global pandemic, COVID-19. Uh, we seem to have more or less coming out of it, but still the challenges persist. Uh, during the year which just passed by, which is of 20, 2021, despite all these challenges, the two-way trade between India and Malaysia has increased by 34%, uh, uh, let's say, compared to the previous year, thereby which is now at 19.4 billion US dollars. These numbers are very encouraging, as this means there are several sectors in the trade basket 
that have grown significantly during the last last one year. But I certainly see uh, with the new renewed emphasis that we are placing on Malaysia as an important destination for India's exports as well as overall bilateral trade. I, I see a lot of prospects of other various uh, baskets to grow uh, during this current year. Uh, friends, also Malaysia has been witnessing a sustained recovery despite the severe COVID-19 hardships. Uh, there has been a healthy recovery of the domestic demand in Malaysia. In fact, the recent uh, World Bank report, which was released only yesterday, provides a very promising uh, growth of the Malaysian economy with several uh, sectors are likely to take uh, grow with a renewed uh, emphasis on uh, expanding to diverse countries. And this is this augurs well for uh, sort of overall growth as we see of the India-Malaysia bilateral trade. Uh, just to put it in perspective, the GDP of Malaysia grew by 3.1% in 2021, as opposed to a contraction of 5.6% in 2022, which as you know, most of the countries in the world have gone through that contraction. Malaysia is not an exception in that context. The recovery continued uh, with the GDP growth of 5% in the first quarter of this year, that is 2022, and there's a projected growth of 5.3% to 6.3% for the whole of 2022. So this growth being driven largely uh, by the domestic consumption and hence the prospects for enhancing our uh, sort of uh, exports in diverse sectors remains extremely an important proposition. Now, friends, also this year happens to be an important year in the annals of India-Malaysia bilateral relations. We will be stepping into the 65 years of diplomatic relations come August this year. And this is an a year, this is an year at which in which we will all be reviewing how our relationship has grown and what needs to be done further. But all indicators are that the, the, the bilateral overall trade investment and other sectors growth is going to be uh, very, very significant, uh, not just because uh, that we have done well in the past, but more because several new opportunities are emerging uh, in the two countries' bilateral relations. Yes, another important in milestone we have is within the ASEAN context, we are having the 30 years of India-ASEAN development partnership uh, this year. Uh, last week only, we had the ASEAN-India uh, special foreign ministers meeting uh, in New Delhi, and we had the participation of His Excellency, the Foreign Minister of Malaysia, where both countries have once again reiterated uh, the, the, the opportun opportunities that exist between the two countries and also that we would be working with renewed vigor on taking forward the what we call enhanced strategic partnership between our two countries. With this broad overview of our relationship, uh, let me at the very outset uh, complement uh, Marine Products Export Development Authority uh, for its efforts in enabling India emerge as the fourth largest exporter of marine products globally. Uh, I welcome the initiative of MPEDA in committing to double its uh, global marine exports from the current uh, $7.2 US billion, uh, dollars billion to $15 billion US dollars in the next five years. I think this is a very, uh, very important ch challenge and also an ambition that has been set by MPEDA. I hope we can work together to make Malaysia an important partner in this growth journey of MPEDA. I understand that Malaysia imported a total of 1.1 uh, billion US dollars worth of marine products globally, uh, whereas our exports, India's exports to Malaysia amounted to only uh, 68.4 million. Uh, this indicates that the scope for expansion of India's marine products to Malaysia is huge and this year, I think uh, it is my ambition and our ambition in the High Commission that we increase this target to at least $100 million uh, so that we can look at it in a more clinical manner as we go forward. I also appreciate MPEDA's efforts to increase awareness in Malaysia about the competencies of Indian marine products. We in the High Commission uh, will be working jointly with MPEDA to hold a series of activities to promote Indian marine products in Malaysia, including encouraging Malaysian participation in Indian seafood fairs and vice versa, uh, participation of Indian side in several very important 
uh, trade fairs that Malaysian government and various agencies hold here in Kuala Lumpur and different parts of the country. Uh, in this context, I encourage Ampeda and Indian marine products exporters to participate in uh, the very important event coming up in September. It's called Malaysia's International Halal uh, Showcase, which is a very important event. Along with, again, I, I understand you have the Selangor International Exposition on Food and Beverages to be held in October this year. Look, I think these are important uh, uh, events uh, where I think uh, our presence, India's presence, and MPEDA's presence should be felt, and I'm very confident with the support of the chairman, MPEDA will be able to make a very effective participation to help improve our presence, uh, virtual, not virtually, but in a physical format. Friends, I'm very confident that today's networking meet with the presence of Indian exporters of marine products and sizable number of Malaysian importers will help improve uh, your contacts on a real-time basis and uh, I need not mention, uh, once again, I'd like to conclude in the sense that our commitment to build this trade to $100 million this year, and I'm very confident that uh, you, with your uh, deliberations today, understanding, as my colleague Sushma has pointed out, uh, it's a kind of an effort to brainstorm and also understand the challenges that, as we, and we would like to know between the traders of the two countries, so that uh, we can work on some of the shortcomings, if any, or improvements that need to be done uh, in improving the trade in this uh, area. I certainly encourage MPEDA to mount a delegation to visit Malaysia for physical meetings. Uh, I'm sure these occasions are there uh, and we look forward to that uh, in, in a very uh, near future. Uh, we'll be closely following on the outcomes of today's virtual meeting. Uh, I once again thank uh, Dr. Raghavan, the chairman MPEDA for leading this uh, discussion and also Shushma, for secretary in the Indian High Commission, for coordinating this event. I also request the participants to share with us your views in promoting exports from India, uh, which require, where it requires certain intervention or engagement with the government of Malaysia or its agencies, so that we can take this marine products uh, for export and trade to a higher level. With this, I also want to thank uh, the participation of KLCT, in this event and also that Omang Sharma and several other businesses which are joining from Malaysian side. And I wish this buyer-seller meet a, a success. And I'm very confident that uh, this will provide us an opportunity to strengthen existing linkages, forge new ones and boost our bilateral trade in marine products. With this, I thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. The, that was indeed a a very special address with a lot of information and uh, uh, we'll be closely uh, uh, supporting the High Commission of India in, in, in increasing the exports of Maray products uh, from India to Malaysia. So next is a presentation on the seafood exports from India to Malaysia. Dr. M. Kathikeyan, Director MPEDA uh, is here. Sir, I request you to make the presentation on the seafood exports from India to Malaysia. Very good morning to all. Uh, His Excellency, High Commissioner of India to Malaysia, uh, respected chairman, uh, deputy president of uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the officials of Embassy of India in uh, Malaysia, the industry representatives of Malaysia, as well as the exporters from India, it's a great privilege for me to be here to make a presentation on the present export trend uh, of seafood world over and to Malaysia and the opportunities where we can uh, catch up on in Malaysia to increase our exports. As our Excellency uh, High Commissioner was pointing out, we have a huge potential in Malaysia. They're importing more than 1.1 billion worth of seafood. So we have an opportunity to increase it immediately in near future. So I'll just make a presentation and show what we are doing in world over and what we have an opportunity in Malaysia. Sure. Uh, uh, very good afternoon to everyone and uh, and as well as the India Embassy to you know co join to organize with KSCK. So I think today morning, uh, today afternoon, I think my presentation is just simple because we just want to update in terms of the industry. 
of course, my first slide actually telling that uh, our minister, Minister of Agriculture and Food Industry, is very concerned in terms of the food security in Malaysia. So that's the reason that in recent time, as far as uh, we are concerned, that we actually open up for you know uh, import and export as well as import permits to be allowed to most of the uh, importers in Malaysia because this is to ensure that our food uh, has been enough uh, locally available to the public. And as well as many other protocols of procedure that's been, you know, is down to ensure that there's be more valuables with the, our importation. And again, to as well as to export out. And at the moment, I think importation of, uh, you know, marine uh, life as well as, you know, fishery concern is overwhelming because we have a huge demand for that. We have hello, a big, big hello, Mr. Gunalan. Gunalan. Hello, Mr. Gunalan. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes. this is not, this is, uh, your presentation is not a starter, sir. So I will uh, invite you afterwards. This is a presentation from MPEDA, please. Yes, uh, it's a presentation has been played by my secretary. So I think i have uh, able to, you know, uh, go through the, my presentation. Uh, Bidi? No. Well, we, we can wait for a few minutes, sir. We'll finish off the presentation by MPEDA. Then there are two more addresses. Then you can make the presentation, sir. Go on, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Please, sir. So, uh, talking about the seafood export, MPEDA is uh, like uh, we are promoting the export of seafood from India to world over. So, more than uh, 121 countries we could export last year. And as uh, pointed out by our chairman, last year was the uh, highest export achieved, 7.74 billion. We had the highest export previously in 1718, so 7 billion. And uh, though there was a dip for the past three years, last year we could do 30% enhancement compared to the previous year, uh, though there was COVID pandemic and all. The efforts taken by IMPEDA with the support of exporters and uh, the government and all the uh, embassies across the world, in Indian embassies across the world has helped in increasing our exports. We did a lot of buyer-seller meets. All the embassies uh, supported us in doing uh, the interaction between the exporters and the importers that helped in enhancing our exports. So we could achieve 7.74 billion. So you can see the share of Indian export to a global share. It's 5.2% we are, uh, our share was. And the growth of world over seafood export was 2.51%, whereas our export uh, growth was 4.91%. So Coming to the territorial division wise exports, as uh, again pointed out by Chairman, so we have done very good in NAFTA, that is the US region, then NEA, that's China and Japan region. EU also we could do almost 99%. But whereas when it comes to ASEAN, we had only done 79%. Though it was like 678 million we have done uh, compared to the target of 853 with all the efforts taken, it was almost like higher compared to in 1920. This 1448 was because Vietnam, we are doing a lot of exports previously in 1819, but that has now shifted to China. So, RLs, the export during last year was uh, higher, uh, 678, but we have a lot of opportunities to increase our exports to ASEAN countries. And uh, the export to Malaysia, particularly, we stand 17, uh, like the so Malaysia stands 17 in terms of uh, the country wise exports. USA stands the first for us, 43% of our export goes to. USA, then China is the second major market for us, then Japan. These three countries dominate our exports for the past almost seven, eight years. US is there for more than 10 years. And Malaysia, like uh, though the target was fixed at uh, 65, uh, sorry, 68 million, we, have, we could achieve almost like 65 million, which is 94%. And the enhancement was 25% compared to the previous year. We had a good growth with the support of the High Commission. We conducted virtual buyer seller meets, then uh, we did a lot of uh, interactions between the exporters and importers that helped us in increasing the exports, but still we have huge potential there in the Malaysian market. Talking about the products, again, the frozen squid and uh, frozen uh, shrimp has good market potential there in uh, uh, Malaysia. And fishes, particularly, they have huge demand for ribbon fish and mackerel, but the price is very low there. That's where our uh, products were not able to be exported to Malaysia because we have good demand in China as well as for these fishes, particularly ribbon fish. So Malaysia, we couldn't capitalize because of the cost which is being offered by the importers there. So this is the uh, split up of the products which is getting exported from India to Malaysia. Frozen squid contributed 33%. Frozen shrimp is 31%. Frozen cuttlefish, you have a good, huge 
potential to export, but we have we could export only two percent of it. Frozen fish is fourteen percent. Uh, this is the same again. Uh, the whole uh, squid. Uh, this is in terms of product. Frozen whole squid contributed to almost like twenty percent of the share. Surimi thirteen point three nine. That surimi is a minced meat prepared from the fish. Then we have frozen mackerel, venami, then scampi, frozen edam, scampi, which contributed for the exports to Malaysia. This again, our uh, Excellency High Commissioner of India is pointing out, we have an import potential in Malaysia was 1.1 billion. So world over, they are importing so much. China is dominating the import exports to Malaysia with 20% of share. Indonesia, again, 14% share. Vietnam have 11.1%, uh, Thailand has 11.5%. But when you see about India, we are in the fifth position in, in terms of supply to Malaysia with 5.5% share. So we can increase this share by almost 10% or 15% in near future and with little of interventions with the support of the High Commission. So this is the product-wise import which is happening where we have a potential to export, like fr fresh or chilled fish. Like they are importing 137, Malaysia is importing 137 million worth material there, but we are, our export is almost nil. Frozen fishes, 117 million Malaysia is importing, but our contribution is only almost like 1%. Cuttlefish, this is one of the uh, good commodity where cuttlefish and squid, they're importing 116 million, Malaysia is importing, and we are exporting like 22% of the share. And frozen shrimp, where we have a good, good uh, potential to export because frozen shrimp contributes to almost like 5 billion exports from India. Out of the 7.74 billion, which is being exported from India, 5 billion is coming from frozen shrimp, particularly Vanami, wherein we have a huge potential. The import from world over by Malaysia is around 100 million. Our share is only around 12 million. So we have a huge potential to increase up to 50 million immediately. So that's where we can immediately tap almost 30, 40 million there. Frozen fish meat, again, 78 million is the, uh, that is uh, the minced meat and uh, the surumi product, where 78 million is being imported by Malaysia and we have a contribution is 9.24 million. So we have a huge potential as well. So these are the interventions what we envisage from embassy to increase our export there. So the, pro the issue is lower prices which are being offered, particularly Malaysia, why our exporters are not concentrating there is the pr price which is being offered by Malaysia is not competitive enough for our exporters to export there. That is one reason what they point out. The second is we are not able to capitalize on the chilled fish or live fish market there because the flight connectivity is not that much, particularly for the past two years, a lot of disruption was there. So what we can do is, so we are organizing the Indian Interna India International Seafood Show in 2023. So uh, we, we would request the High Commission to organize the business meet wherein the group of importers can come from Malaysia to visit our Indian, India International Seafood Show and we, they can have tie up with our exporters. The second is we can organize more number of virtual biosolar meets. We have been organizing this biosolar meets with Malaysia as well as with other countries. So we can at least do six biosolar meets during this year maybe two months once we can have a biosolar meet and we can connect between the importer and the exporter. That was a good success for the past two years, what we could achieve. The third is uh, we can identify the major importers and supermarket chain and identify the products which they're looking for. And product specific requirements can be set. Then we can identify the exporters who are really doing those products and we can connect these exporters and the importers immediately. And we can also do a market study EBITDA has taken initiative to do market study with China. Then we also did some uh, study at Korea and other markets in Europe. We could do it with the support of the embassies. So if um, uh, the High Commission can help us in doing some study there, so that will be useful for us to update our uh, rec market requirements and we can fulfill the market requirements by uh, channelizing the supply. The fourth is the market intelligence report. If uh, we can get some market intelligence report on a consistent basis, so that we can pass it on to our exporters and that will help us to enhance our exports. This is what we could uh, envisage the support from High Commission and we'll definitely work with the High Commission to ensure that we'll be able to enhance our export immediately to uh, Malaysia. And as uh, it is pointed out, we can immediately enhance it from 65 million to 150 million 
in the, a year or two. That, that's the submission from our end. And we request the support, the full heart, whole lot of support from my commission. And our exporters will definitely tap the potential to enhance our exports. Thank you all. Thank you, Katyan, sir, uh, for giving the elaborate presentation of the status of exports from India to Malaysia. Now we have with us uh, Mr. VKK Rajeshagaran, Deputy President of uh, Kuala Lumpur and Selangor Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I request uh, Mr. Rajeshagaran to address the gather. Your Excellency, we um, are ready. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Dr. Raghavan, uh, it is an, uh, a pleasure to actually be invited to collaborate with the High Commission to discuss on the virtual buyer-seller uh, meet on marine products. In fact, uh, I was kind of um, uh, taken the fact that there was so much information that is available in the market itself uh, as far as import and export is concerned. And I think the biggest problem that we actually see as members, uh, we have approximately about a thousand members were actually kind of scattered between Kuala Lumpur and, and Selangor and being um, the center of business opportunities. Um, we, we do see food security as one of the biggest problem at the moment, and also the cost of living. Uh, so when the cost of food is actually going up high, we, we can only think about leaning towards uh, on our trade partners to kind of uh, improve on certain products, like for example, the seafood or marine products. Uh, this is where I think we can actually leverage on our network uh, between countries uh, through the High Commission itself to conduct various um, meetings uh, between members or, or companies where we can actually uh, look at what are the products that we can actually use Malaysia as, as a base. Um, the reason why I'm saying is that uh, we always sold Malaysia as the gateway to ASEAN and, and vice versa. So basically, we would like to take the opportunity in the coming times to, to look at opportunities that might come about, um, bringing about our members and also the members of APIDA to, to look at uh, opportunities in the marine products itself. Uh, would say that um, uh, again. I would like to take the opportunity to thank uh, the High Commission and also uh, the Chairman of PIDA on this opportunity to to uh, make this address. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, that was uh, Mr. VK uh, VKK Rajeshagaran, Deputy President from Kuala Lumpur and Selangor Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, thank you, sir, and you for your remarks. Uh, now we have with us uh, Mr. Alex Nainan, President of the Seafood Exporters Association of India, Kerala region. I request Mr. Alex to give you, uh, your experience uh, of uh, having business with uh, Malaysia. So, His Excellency, um, to be unready, Indian High Commissioner to Malaysia, Honorable Chairman and PDA, Dr. Ken Raghavan respected officials of the uh, High Commission Office in Malaysia, friends uh, from the Malaysian uh, trade, uh, officers from uh, MPDA, fellow uh, exporters and dear friends. Uh, at the outset, let me thank MPDA and the High Commission Office for organizing such a beautiful event. It was uh, much wanted and uh, MPDA has been doing this and it's a great opportunity. I mean, during these pandemic times, such meetings are happening. Uh, it gives a platform for us to interact with our uh, I mean, uh, importer friends as well. So thank you so much. And I think I'll just go straight to the, uh, I mean, uh, straight to what was requested uh, for, for me to address. So, you know, uh, trade, I mean, uh, my experience, my personal experience with Malaysia, with Malaysian importers have been very good. Actually. So let it be payment or, I mean, uh, let it be uh, the, uh, I mean, the, uh, the commitment to their, uh, uh, to the orders that, have, that they've taken has been very good. And I find there is tremendous opportunity with, where we can really scale up our exports into Malaysia. So, I mean, it's, there is huge potential. That is what I personally feel. Personally feel that. Now, if, I mean, Chairman had uh, mentioned, earlier mentioned that our exports into China has gone down. Probably here is an opportunity where we can really make use of this opportunity and uh, I mean, probably scale up our exports. So I would request, I mean, personally one thing, 
I mean, uh, I, I mean, there are a lot of uh, importers who have faced a lot of issues with Indian exporters. I've heard from uh, other sources because you are not going, the exporters have not, uh, the importers in Malaysia have not gone to the right people. So there are uh, traders and brokers in between who have, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, who have gone in for uh, I mean, lower prices and eventually they're getting, I mean, uh, lower quality products. I mean, this is an information which I got. So I would request the importer community to approach the exporters directly. So you have MPDA on one side, they can support you. And so even the Exporters Association also can support you in finding the right exporter or the producer from India. So I would request um, in, uh, you to get, get in touch with the uh, with MPDA and the Seaport Exporters Association to find your right partner for uh, importing products. I think that's all from now. I can pitch in uh, I mean, data I mean, during the session uh, if required. And with these words, I think uh, I'll conclude my uh, remarks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alex, uh, for sharing your valuable uh, experience uh, with Malaysia during this forum. So now we have with us uh, Dr. Gunalan Shanmugan, the industry representative, farming and livestock in the Kuala Lumpur uh, uh, and Selangor in the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I request Dr. Gunalan to start the presentation. And once again, I request all the participants to give the questions in the chat box so that we can discuss it during the question answer session. Thank you. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, and, and, uh, and it's a nice event to be organized today. And uh, thank you so much for the opportunity as well as uh, for the high commissioner speech, as well as you know the India Embassy uh, collaborate further with uh, Kasiki for today's event. And I think my part is more to you know the current status of the industry as well as you know what what kind of what, what are the regulations that involve. So quickly I go for it. This slide actually you know pertaining to our food security. I think Mr. Raja has explained this now that uh, food security is a very important part that, that we are considering now under the Minister of Agriculture and Food Industry as well as you know the entire other subsectors has been collaborating together to work toward this particular goal. And of course modernization in this particular sector, it doesn't matter the subsector of agriculture or fishery or you know, marine life, we are going to this kind of smart farming. So I think it's very important for us to know these facts before we know we go into this trading. Uh, next slide. Marine captures, basically, we know that it's more to, you know, uh, managed and regulated by the Department of Fishery in Malaysia, you know, under Fishery Acts 1985. So marine capture fishery is main contributor to fish production and economy of Malaysia. In 2016, so almost to know 1.574 million uh, metric tons. So these are the figures that we actually are looking into. And the impact of communities, you know, for example, fish, crustaceans, you know, mollusks and other aquatic invertebrates accounted for almost 0.44%. So this show that we're not, we're not limited to one particular category of, you know, marine life, but it's actually open to many others because I think uh, Malaysian, basically, we are good eaters. And there's a lot of sectors that actually depending to marine life, for example, Chinese restaurants, you know, and uh, many food outlets, they're actually using uh, what they call fish as uh, one of the main uh, recipe for their attraction to the crowds. So we are looking to a very huge consumption of, uh, you know, marine life in Malaysia itself. Next slide. And uh, when we look into, uh, you know, total fishery production, of course, we are looking to aquaculture, inland captures, and uh, marine captures. Of course, we have our local industry itself, that, but it's not, you know, enough or self-sufficient. So we are still importing many uh, from my other parts of the world. For the next slide, and uh, the fishery department only give permission for import export movement of live fish. Of, of course, live fish is very important part of the importation because it's need to have a biological samples. For example, you need to meet the, all the criteria for biosecurity. I think as much as we know, many uh, what we call uh, importers actually struggling hard enough with the bioscurity terms and conditions because this is mainly improvised according to our uh, what they call CITEX and international rules and current situation happening. Many diseases in marine life as well as you know fishery concern is coming up. So of course bioscurity we improve uh, many uh, many terms you know, to make sure that we don't you know have this importation that actually jeopardize our local industry. I think it's very important for that. Next slide please. And uh, for Top trading, of course, Indonesia, China, Vietnam, Thailand, India, I think is sharing almost 5.69% in 2020. So these are figures we're looking at. Of course, Norway, Japan, Myanmar, Oman, and Iran is part of the you know, uh, top trading partners. So we're looking at you know, million dollars of uh, trading in US dollar. Next slide. 
and import structure of fish crustacean mollusks of course we are looking into you know 29% uh, is almost fish frozen excluding fish fillet and other fish meat of alien so these are the terms and these are the codings that we use and each segments we already can get this data i can share the data after this to all all of you those who are participate for the event and that show that uh, many segments of the industry actually uh, have a divisions where we have you know even a dried salted you know uh, in shell cooked by steaming or by boiling water so these are categories of uh, importation they are looking to so this structure you can be available when you log into a fishery department website you can log go into uh, what we call this uh, uh, statistical data where you can have all this print out for your view so this will be more strategic in terms of what kind of trade that we are looking into next slide and procedure for carrying out the import export activity of live fish of course live fish is a bit dif uh, different of course and come to ornament i've been informed by the you know one of the official in the fishery say that ornament is coming up is a booming up industry in malaysia what's the reason because we are strategically locked class nearer to singapore and singapore one of the export of ornamental uh, fish as far as uh, we are concerned so i think there's a potential in terms of the location of malaysia as well as uh, we as a trade up to have this ornamental fish as a you know one of the uh, export but for the export i think importations do help where we can import as well as export and the neighboring country like uh, singapore will play a part for trade and commercial activities you must uh, know comply for certain uh, rules and regulation one of them the import export quantity permits must be constructed according to bioscrutiny requirement then permits must be registered with relevant state fishery bioscrutiny unit and you have to apply for a wholesale license from uh, malaysia fishery development authority or we shortly call it lkim and apply for registration as importer or exporter with the department of quality and inspection service malaysia maki so these are the things that we have been looking as a, one of the procedures la next slide please and for condition of application for import permit for fish or an ornamental stream uh, i think uh, you have to comply for again it will be the premise will be very important in terms of compliance to bioscrutiny requirement and of course markets markets stand for department of quality and inspection service malaysia i think those traders have lies to this kind of import or doesn't matter is other product as well markets is one of the important company and they cannot skip you know because they are in charge in terms of import export and definitely you get all the permission all the document you have a system like e dagang where you can log in you can apply for import uh, import permit or you know export permit where they will go through your health certificate fish fishery life fish definitely have health certificate that they have to be approved by the department of fishery under the bioscrutiny uh, division so these are things that you have to meet in terms of compliance for the import and of course apply for wholesale license again will play a part by ak have and of course register with dagan net technology where you have a e permit system so we do have a bit of you know advance uh, uh, what we call digital platform where you can apply then all the documents can do in, in situ itself then in terms of approval you can get the final list uh, print out so these are things that you can do uh, we are we are doing uh, currently uh, to fast faster the process of uh, approval as well as compliance to all the rules and regulation next slide and import condition for live fish of course we have to have a name and address of exporters you have to know who's your exporters whether they have experience or not whether they are already in this industry or they are in other segment of industry and what are the things that they have to do you know what kind of uh, facility do they have this are very important part and name and address of destination and importer as well is very important name scientific and common name because fish you know that sometimes you can't use the common name so you need to have scientific and common name the size and number of of live fish and how you should be stored and how you should be tra transport these are information that technically will be evaluated by the uh, department of fishery under the bioscrutiny as well as other division as well and origin of live fish because why the origin is very concerned because we want to update ourselves and many times uh, there's certain uh, intentional uh, uh, consideration need to be there for for us to know and the live fish must come of come from an official they recognize like a country zone farms establishment unaffected by ohi listed diseases this is one of the very important concept that we have under bioscrutiny and the live fish have been subjected to healthy surveillance program according to do as described in diagnostic manual for aquatic uh, animal diseases so i think uh, we need to go that far but what i'm telling is that uh, this is one of the major concerns for to get the approval for importation and uh, next slide please I want to go go for a very quick one. Uh, import condition for live fish into Malaysia. Okay, live fish will be inspected by the competent authority of the exporting country within seventy two hours of export date, 
then the, the live fish must not come from any source that they have an unusual mortality during the previous six months. So these are the main concerns. I think uh, India do have very good systems to monitor all these things, you know, to have this uh, uh, episodic evaluation to all this uh, necessary, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, hatchery or in terms of the, you know, the premise that actually conduct the exportation. And live fish must be quantified at least 14 days in approved quality areas in the exporting country and show no clinical sign of disease prior to export. So these are terms and conditions that you have to meet. And next slide, please. And procedure for importing live corals and live fish from overseas, for example, Australia and America. So we have to obtain the CITES certificate from the country of origins for the coral and marine fish being imported. And you also need to apply for CITES permit issued by the Department of Fish and Fish here. So CITES, I think we all know what it is. So CITES import export aquatic uh, species permit service uh, can be served to get more details on that. So come to the Malaysia, know our uh, Malaysia requirements that are pertaining to international law and the regulation. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a, what we call graphical evidence of what kind of you know, value of export we have. You know, Singapore is, might be one of the you know, leaders in terms of export uh, from our uh, Malaysia to Singapore. And second will be you know, uh, from other countries as well. The EU, of course, is 4.16. And you have Australia, Vietnam, and so forth. Next slide, please. And in terms of import, uh, you have you know, China, of course, they, they have 25.68%. The first slide. Okay, the first slide is show that the China 25 per 68, you have uh, you know other countries 20 by 51. And Indonesia, of course, is coming up, booming up. Indonesia 14 by 40. And India over there is 5 by 86. But based on what we have been listening so far, I think they have a very good potential to increase the uh, exportation to Malaysia. This means we can import more from India. As long as met the criteria as well, requirement by the you know uh, Department of Fishery as well as like ACAHAM and it's Met all these you know, requirements that to have a local permits, to have the story site, all these things. I think you all can have a very good industry to trade with Malaysia, of course. And the next slide. And this is just a you know, value of export import. You can see the much difference. And in terms of sales sufficient level, we have enough, uh, we're not enough in terms of consumption. So, of course, we have an industry for the pet or ornamental fish, and we have an industry for consumption. But at the moment, because of food security, I think that's of consumption is going up. And the demand is getting bigger and bigger. So strategically speaking, you have to work and you have to listen to Minister of Agriculture and Food Industry. Maybe have a personal, uh, you know, a face to face meeting with them. See what are the requirements by LKM as well as the Department of Fishery. Then tell it back to the supplier or the importers in Malaysia. To see that these are requirements. Please meet this requirement and get the exposures to meet the requirement as well. So this way you strategically assemble all these three groups under one roof to give them more information of what are the things are, what are the fish, or what are the type of fish, what are the numbers, what are the value that we're looking into. So with that, I hand my presentation. If there's any question, I'm able to take one or two, or we can share our, you know, our views on this particular industry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gunalan, uh, for giving that wonderful presentation with a lot of information. Uh, but you mentioned about only a live fish. We would like to know more about the seafood that we can do in a subsequent meeting also. We can uh, regarding the rules and regulations of import of uh, frozen seafood or chilled seafood uh, to Malaysia. So anyway, so we have come completed all the presentations and addresses uh, scheduled for this uh, program. Now it is the question answer uh, session. Uh, for this, I invite uh, Mr. Anil Kumar P, Joint Director Marketing of Ampada. Thank you, Dr. Jibin, and uh, a very good morning and good afternoon to all the dignitaries and participants uh, from India and uh, Malaysia. As uh, our previous speakers have uh, pointed out, that uh, this year is a very important year, uh, which is celebrating uh, the engagement with Malaysia at diplomatic level as well as with ASEAN. And, uh, uh, as Dr. Gunalan has uh, presented a very exhaustive presentation on uh, detailing all the technical aspects, and uh, it is a very useful and informative presentation. Thank you for that. And uh, now it's a time for uh, question answer session. We would request you to uh, post your questions in the chat. And uh, posting your questions in the chat will enable us to compile similar questions and uh, you know place it before the speakers so that they can answer. We have received a couple of questions already, and uh, I will not go individually one by one because it will take 
time is precious for all of us so individually it will be uh, you know repetition will be there so it will be boring so i would uh, you know go to the first question the first question is uh, from uh, cp aqua malaysia they are interested uh, in frost and shrimp products and uh, uh, they would like to know especially vanamai that's what i understand vanamai shrimp they would like to know uh, the list of exporters who are uh, you know ready to supply this uh, frost and shrimp now i would uh, answer that question because uh, the list of exporters are available in the empeda website i would request dr jibin to uh, put our uh, website address in the chat box uh, it is empeda.gov.in if you go to our empeda website there is a section for importers and then when you click on the importer section you will be able to see the list of exporters with the list of products against each exporter what is the product he is supplying that will be given there that is one option you have second option uh, you have is you can email us uh, we would put our email ids both of our myself and dr jibin's email ids in the chat box so you can email us uh, your product specification with the detailed product specifications so that we can identify exporters who are able to supply this and organize a one to one uh, buyer seller meet virtually initially and uh, i would uh, the third thing i would suggest you to do is we are participating in trade shows international trade shows and september we have a trade show coming up in singapore uh, so you, you know you are very close to singapore please come down there we can arrange a buyer seller meeting we can arrange meeting with our exporters there please inform us in advance so that we can identify the exporters who are coming there and connect you to them or uh, even before that we can have a virtual buyer seller meet and i would like to emphasize here one point uh, which mr alex nayanar has mentioned that is a second question about uh, you know how to identify uh, you know good exporters who who will be really supplying and uh, that is one question so we would uh, i would again emphasize what mr alex nayanar the seafood exporters association president from kerala has pointed out go to genuine exporters only if you go to you know there are so many brokers and agents which we do not know and uh, there won't be any there will be issues you know disputes is likely to come very easily so you should only buy from uh, exporters who are registered with empera because empera is a nodal agency is the only agency where uh, they need to register for export of seafood products from india so you can go to the empera website if you still want further you know granular level information about the product specification and all that you can very well email to us it's already our email ids are already there in the uh, chat box please note that that's what i would suggest and if any any more questions are there please uh, please uh, put it in the chat yeah how can we know about the list of dry fish importers from malaysia see we are uh, engaging with our uh, you know i commission there and they are collecting the information and we would also uh, you know come out with uh, as a part of the planned market study we will also come out with a importer directory which which is which could be a verified directory and from that directory we will be right now we don't have that directory we are planning to do that and another source of uh, information would be uh, to So you know we will uh, to we, there is one agency international agency called Infofish in Kuala Lumpur. They I understand that they make importers directory every year. You can approach them also, but definitely we will uh, help you in this. We will get back to you on this. Yeah, again the question is from our uh, Indian side. How can you connect to with the genuine buyers? please send your uh, you know request to us by email what is the product you can uh, offer for to malaysia and we will connect you through our high commission uh, to right people that is the immediate thing we can do once the buyer directory is ready we will uh, give, you will be able to access that buyer directory what are the criteria needed for the frozen shrimps and frozen cephalopods and frozen fishes and could you explain covid 
protocol in Malaysia, uh, which uh, uh, I would request uh, if uh, uh, one somebody from Malaysia could answer that, that would be nice. And Dr. Gunalan, would you be able to answer, take this question, if I may ask you? Yeah. It's the question is in the chat, you can see that. Okay, I think it will be mistaken. The question is what the criteria needed for frozen stream and frozen cephalopods and frozen fish. I think first important thing is that the facilities, you need to have the facilities to, you know, to keep these frozen uh, things. And because the authority will come and check to make sure that you have enough capacity according to what your importation value or the size. But again, the most important, uh, the first part of the things that, like what I mentioned in my presentation is the biosecurity because uh, come to stream, of course, uh, you are looking to a certain level of you know compliance where the origins of the stream as well as you know how they kept by the exporters you know what kind of grade what kind of quality they, they do have i think these are the things the main thing they have to contribute or give in terms of documentation okay, to get the approval but frozen is not as tedious as the life uh, you know life uh, uh, festations of stream concern so i think you can get the permission the approval as far as this, you can provide all the documents requests so what do you you can do that you can contact uh, uh, the secretary perhaps i will leave uh, what they call my number as well as some detail maybe further up we can email to you what are the specific requirement needed thank you thank you thank you dr gunalan uh, i will go to the next sir, question uh, yeah mr anil uh, this is sushma from the high commission of india if uh, can yeah, i please. make a couple of points uh, just yeah, related please. to the previous questions uh, please, please. To begin with, uh, uh, yeah, there was a question about COVID-related protocols. As far as imports of frozen fish is concerned, there is no change in terms of protocol or in terms of arrival of the import restrictions pre-COVID and post-COVID. Uh, to our understanding, to the best of our knowledge, there is no difference absolutely between the requirements that were there in place before COVID and after COVID. So rest assured on that account, if you have any specific question, do let us know. Uh, we have confirmed this, that there is no change in uh, uh, import procedures or anything after COVID. As regards the importer's uh, directory uh, of various products, do get in touch with the High Commission. I'll ask my colleague to uh, give you the email addresses where you can get in touch with us, uh, specifying the exact product and the HS code if you have. Even otherwise, if you don't, just let us know the exact categories of products that you would like uh, the importer's list of. We also regularly engage with the info fish here. Uh, they do have an importer's directory, but we understand in not all segments. So um, that, would, that would help us to a limited extent in certain sectors, but we do have uh, an exhaustive list of importers in various categories. So please feel free to get in touch with us and uh, my colleagues will just put in the email addresses of the High Commission for this in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. One last about COVID-related protocols. There is in terms of travel of actual uh, trade, it does. So I'm talking about physical travel. There is no quarantine restriction now in Malaysia, absolutely, for fully vaccinated travelers. Uh, of course, in terms of trade, freight charges continue to remain a challenge uh, as regards many sectors. But that's not so much of a challenge to marine products because uh, I understand most of the freight is now only air freight and uh, air connectivity has now once again resumed between India and Malaysia. Thank you, madam. Thank you for that uh, inputs. Uh, this one question, what are the criteria needed for, uh, sorry, uh, as, a, as a company specializing in marine infrastructure, how can we collaborate with the marine life exporters? We, I would request you to put some more clarification. What is marine infrastructure? Are you an equipment supplier? If so, please specify that then so that we'll be able to answer uh, it better. And now uh, I will go to mean while you are giving the you know, clarification, I will go to the next question. Uh, when is when will IISS be held in 2023? It is scheduled from 15 to 17 February uh, 2023 at uh, Calcutta. And uh, uh, please uh, please uh, you know block your ticket for uh, visiting the uh, India International Seafood Show. And uh, 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 any other questions? Uh, I couldn't understand the question on the uh, marine infrastructure. Uh, if it is an, if you are an ex, you know uh, in, uh, supplier of uh, info, uh, you know equipment, you can very well uh, you know connect with us. 
uh, we are you can exhibit or you can participate in the IASS 2023. If it is something else, please let us know so that we can uh, give you a correct answer. Okay, you build pontoons. Uh, uh, is it possible to contribute to in terms of setting up infrastructure for exporters? Uh, you can definitely uh, you know send us a mail, and uh, as I said, you can uh, participate in the India International Seafood Show where all the exporters will be coming there, and it's a networking place. It's a great place to connect. You can come there or you can send us an email and we can circulate it among all the registered exporters so that they can get back to you. That's what you can do. Uh, for trade inquiry, you can email. Yeah, sorry. That is from Sushma, madam. Yeah, yeah you can email. Email to uh, High Commission is saying that you can email to their email ID for any trade inquiry. So please do that. And uh, you can also copy to us. So if there is anything required from our side, we will also do that. I think uh, Alex wants to speak. Uh, uh, sir, uh, yeah, see, yeah. The, please, please. Okay, so it's uh, not a question. Uh, sir. See, my it's a concern what uh, we are facing, especially in the uh, so southern uh, east and west coast of India, the southern ports. So, like ports like Tutikaran, Cochin, and all those. My uh, suggestion is to the Indian High Commission uh, in Malaysia. So, our biggest problem is that we are facing a big challenge because we are highly dependent on uh, the port of Colombo in Sri Lanka. So, now, but we do have vessels calling into uh, Malaysia, direct vessels. So, is there a possibility to, I mean, speak to the uh, Malaysian shipping ministry and probably try and increase? Uh, the uh, number of vessels going in, uh, I mean, especially uh, for the party, like say for example, Japan and uh, other countries. So because uh, I mean, our Colombo schedules are uh, having a big problem and Malaysia, you have a very good and well advanced port. So I mean, it's a, just a suggestion for uh, the Indian High Commission's office. Thank you. So Alex, are you talking about Clang port or any other specifically? Port Clang, yeah, right, yeah, Port Clang. Uh, Mr. Alex, can you just repeat? Uh, I, I'm slightly confused here. You're talking about direct vessel uh, port connectivity and the number of vessels currently uh, between Kochi and Chuchikurin and Port Klang, or are they going uh, through Colombo? That is the concern that you have. Now, our concern is we are going through Colombo, but off late, uh, there are a lot of issues with, uh, the, uh, with Colombo port. So, I mean, we are, it's a transshipment uh, port for uh, the South Indian, uh, I mean, we, it's especially for the South Indian ports, actually. Colombo is a transshipment port. We are highly dependent on it. Of late, we are having a lot of issues uh, regarding the connectivity. I mean, vessels are not keeping schedules. Uh, but fortunately, though there are vessels uh, directly calling uh, into uh, Malaysian ports, uh, I think that frequency can be increased so that our dependency on Port of Colombo also, I mean, uh, I mean can be brought down. So, I mean, it's just a suggestion. Sure, uh, I think we'll need to look into the numbers and details further. As we understand, there is, as you mentioned also, there is a lot of direct connectivity already, uh, presumably between maybe other ports in South India, not necessarily from Kochi and uh, Korin. So we'll look into that exact two ports because maybe that is where the origin of uh, or source of marine products lies heavily. Because there are a lot of direct connectivity on the other side, like from Chennai, there are many uh, directly to Malaysia. But I think we'll get into more details and come back to you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. And uh, there is a request that uh, uh, if all the importers can introduce themselves uh, so that uh, you know we will know who are all they. Uh, I am not sure whether we have time for that. What we would suggest is uh, uh, Maybe uh, uh, we request all the importer friends to give their uh, details in the chat so that we, you know, all the participants will be able to know for uh, the details. And meanwhile, I'll go to the next question. Uh, this is Danish Gassi from uh, Kaif Seafood. Uh, they are asking for uh, export. Uh, we are mainly exporting Malaysia frost and squid shrimp fish items. So they need uh, more information on the uh, frozen, uh, you know, uh, squid and uh, shrimp and fish item buyers. And I'm sure 
uh, you must have seen uh, Mr. Danish Ghasi, the answer from Sushma, madam. Uh, you can definitely email them. The email ID is there with your uh, request. They will definitely try, uh, get back to you with the required information if they have it. So that's it. And if any more questions, please. Ma'am, uh, Sushma, madam, uh, I would like to uh, ask you a suggestion. Shall we go for, uh, do we have time for introduction by importers who are attending this, uh, this uh, program? Shortly, introductions, uh, yeah. Would you want them to kind of choose one by one or would they be doing it? Uh, surely, I think we can still spare a few. That's very good. The purpose very good. of this meeting is to interact, so surely, yes. Yes, yes. So uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would request all the importer from friends who are participating from Malaysia uh, just to introduce your name, switch on your camera and speaker, microphone, and uh, introduce your uh, name, uh, company name, and a few words about your business. If, you know, maybe uh, one minute, if you are able to take, that would be wonderful. We would, you know, since we have some time, we can do that. Please. I won't be able to call one by one because uh, I, I cannot recognize who is an importer, who is not an importer. So I would request you to voluntarily, voluntarily come forward and introduce yourself. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, if any more questions are there, you can put it in the chat box. Uh, good morning, everybody. So, I'm uh, CS Sarpati, additional general manager uh, from my company, So, uh, basically, uh, so exporting uh, some of our products, which we are basically doing the frozen line and mixing mostly in all the evaluated form like PG, PGT of uh, and headless cell on GZ mill uh, button file like this. So we are also we have also shipping our previous time some of our product to Malaysia. And uh, once upon a time, I think uh, two years uh, two or three years back, there is a training program in Popis Malaysia and Ebeda. So we have also joined that. So we are basically in Odisha, uh, near to Bhubanishar, our uh, main plant is there. And we have another sister company in Odisha, and I'm a plant of Mr. Newton. There is also a year from Munich. So like uh, this our background is. And uh, this session is very much informative uh, regarding this uh, Malaysia shipment and uh, requirement of the uh, Malaysia, uh, to Malaysia exports. So it is very informative. I'm very much obliged that this uh, program is organized and uh, we have participated in it. Thank you. Mr. Anil, uh, yeah, Mr. Anil, what we do is we do have the list of importers who are participating today. We will share their profiles and contact details and the names. I think with everyone who has participated in the event from the Indian side and with Epida, so that you can, you know, get in touch with them. I can see the connectivity is not clear and we couldn't really hear uh, the Malaysian importer just now. So we will share with you the entire list of participants today. That would be best, ma'am. That would be best. That's uh, very nice of you. We will also share the, you know, the details of exporters who have part participated. Uh, otherwise, it will be very difficult to, you know, hear properly if connectivity is not uh, good. There's one question. Can you reply on this uh, issue, this tax issue involved in Malaysia? I'm not sure what uh, the question is. If you can just put your question more cl clearly, we will be able to answer. Uh, that is from Mr. Rajesh Shekharan, if I can see it. Uh, what what tax issue you are talking about? Uh, please, could you please clarify it? Uh, okay, what will be the tax involved here in Malaysia, if any?
yeah if uh, the question is is there any tax involved for importing uh, marine products to malaysia so any import duty that is a question if i have understood the question correctly so uh, sushma madam is there any uh, could you be able to answer or i would request mr dr gunalan also to chip in the question is uh, what is the import duty for marine products uh, to import of marine products to malaysia dr gunalan would you be able to uh, give some inputs on this yeah can you hear me now yeah i can hear ma'am okay thank you no i was saying that the duty structure is uh, different actually it is not common for all marine products there is different uh, duty rate depending on the nature of the product depending on the exact hs code and we will share the duty structure right after this meeting we have it available with us it's not the same it, it is quite different depending on the product thank you thank you ma'am it's uh, uh, we know that you know most of the importing countries the duty structure is different for different types of products chapter 3 you have one one set of duties while chapter 16 there is another set of duties so thank you ma'am for uh, uh, the answer and uh, if uh, there are no more questions i think uh, we can conclude uh, this meeting uh, i would uh, i would request if you have any more questions please don't hesitate to email to us either to mpeda or to uh, the indian high commission you have uh, the email ids of all of us in the chat box please do that and uh, as uh, madam sushma mentioned we will share the details of the participating importers and from our side we'll share the uh, you know the uh, list of uh, profiles of the participating exporters also and if further questions are there i repeat again please uh, email to us so that we can answer i would uh, uh, hand over uh, the thing to dr jibin kumar to take it forward thank you thank you sir uh, for the question answer session so most of the questions have been handled and any more questions uh, please mail to empeda as well as to the high commission of india for the concerned questions we will try to answer your questions uh, as far as possible and regarding the last question uh, regarding the regarding the tariff uh, there is a there is a specific portal uh, that has been incorporated in empeda website also that is called uh, market taxes map so the address i have been shared in the in the in the chat box that is macmap.org in that you there is an option to give to select the countries select the product and you will get to know the uh, tariff tariff rates of that particular country and the products so it is a very informative uh, website uh, you can find the link uh, in the chat box also it is provided in in the empeda website also so finally a, 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 i am uh, proposing the uh, vote of thanks uh, for this program it was indeed a, a fruitful fruitful discussion and the forum was very active with more than uh, 100 uh, people participating in this program both from uh, malaysia as well as from india uh so begin this uh, what of thanks first of all i would like to thank uh, honorable chairman of empeda dr k n jakavan uh, who is always encouraging uh, us to do more and more online uh, programs like this so i thank you sir uh, for uh, giving approval for this pro uh, for conducting this uh, program uh, i would like to thank the honorable to malaysia his excellency p be and ready for the special address he has uh, delivered during this uh, uh, forum and then i would like to thank uh, ms c sushma first secretary commerce and education i commission of india kuala lumpur uh, madam was always uh, keep on discussing with uh, empeda uh, for uh, conducting programs like this uh, i uh, sincerely thank you ma'am for uh, leading the uh, leading this program uh, from the high commission side and uh, i would like to thank uh, dr m kartikeyan director of empeda for giving a, a detailed presentation on seafood exports to malaysia thank you sir for the presentation
I would like to thank from the uh, Malaysian side, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Selangor, Indian Con Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. VKK Rajasekaran, as well as uh, Dr. Gunalan Shanmugan uh, for uh, uh, giving, uh, giving a, a, a detailed analysis uh, about the industry and uh, the rules and regulations for import of live seafood, uh, live uh, marine products uh, to Malaysia. And uh, I would also like to thank especially to Mr. Alex Nainan, President of Seafood Exporters Association of India, Kerala region, uh, for uh, sharing the experience and uh, suggesting uh, important things of concern uh, to the to the High Commission of India. So uh, I would also like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Anil Kumar, Joint Director Marketing from Empeda, for uh, handling the question and answer session uh, as usual and uh, wonderfully uh, answering most of the questions. Uh, asked by uh, asked by the participants. Also, uh, I would like request all the participants uh, to write to uh, MPEDA in the given email addresses, also to the High Commission of India regarding the concerns, and we will try to answer all this, uh, uh, try to answer the questions as far as possible. And I would also like to thank all the exporters and importers joined from uh, India as well as Malaysia to make this program a wonderful and fruitful one. Uh, we have noted all the details and uh, the emails also available with us. We'll be sharing with uh, the High Commission of India for uh, further communications and uh, inviting you all for uh, uh, further uh, further uh, activities or by seller meets we are planning in the coming years. I would also like to thank all officials of EMPRA uh, who has participated in this program and uh, shared the program with the exporters uh, to making it a wonderful uh, success. I will also like to thank the EDP section of Empeda for uh, providing the online platform and uh, hosting the program through and uh, assisting us throughout this uh, program. And thank you uh, very well and a wonderful day ahead. Thank you very much.